This is Wickham Sound. Hello everyone, you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. This is the weekly show where we cover local arts news, we have a different guest each week, we listen to some local and unsigned music, and we also have some creative work to share you over in the Rylight Zone, where we have a story and, uh, and or a poem each week. And we're also going to head over to Twangley Jack Ford in the Elk Shed later on for this week's album review. You can always find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, and uh, you can also email me here at the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk I always love to hear from people particularly if you have any local arts news that you'd like to share if you think you'd be a good guest on the show or if you have mp3s of performance poetry music that kind of stuff please do go ahead and let me know so uh, as always we're going to kick off this week's show by heading over to the Rye Light Zone and this is a, a one-off short story one of mine uh, called They Like the Darkness it's about spiders so if you're an ar- arachnophobe I don't know, put some cotton in your ears now. And uh, this is read by Susie DeMarco. So thank you to Susie. This is They Like the Darkness. They Like the Darkness. Natalie Briggs didn't like spiders. In fact, she hated them. From little money spiders to big black widows creeping into the country in bunches of bananas or lying in wait behind reinforced glass in zoos and safari parks. She hated them. She hated the way they scuttled sideways across the floor, and how they made their webs in the darkest corners, and how they leapt out at her with their spindly, hairy legs and evil eyes. In short, Natalie Briggs was an arachnophobe. Penny from the office hated spiders too, but her hatred was in a different league. Penny would attack them with a rolled-up newspaper. Natalie needed light artillery. Have you tried conkers? Penny had asked after an arachnid in the bathroom had given Natalie a sleepless night. It might just be an old wives' tale, but they're meant to keep spiders away if you leave them on the windowsill. So Natalie tried to find some conkers, but to no avail. The trees had lost their leaves, and all of the conkers had long since disappeared into the sticky pockets of schoolboys who weren't actually allowed to play with them in case someone lost an eye. Maybe it was acorns anyway, Penny had said, or pine cones, something like that. So Natalie stocked up on acorns and pine cones, which she bought in bulk in an online auction. She scattered them throughout the house on window sills and mantelpieces, on shelves and in cupboards, until every room was filled with pine cones and acorns. But it didn't work and Natalie still found herself reduced to a nervous wreck every time one of the eight-legged freaks made its way into her house, to lounge in the lounge or to swallow flies in the dining room. Natalie had had enough. She called one exterminator after another and welcomed a seemingly endless procession of middle-aged men into her house. But it was as though the arachnids knew they were coming. Whenever the bug men came round... They'd be lucky to find as much as a daddy long legs. They set traps, but the spiders seemed to know they were there, and for every one that was caught or killed, a dozen seemed to take its place. And eventually the exterminators stopped taking her calls, as did her friends, and then her family. And then, one day, everything changed. Natalie saw an ad in the back of a gossip mag, which would change her life forever. Buy the Foxo 3000, it said. This revolutionary new ultrasonic device uses the latest technology to repel insects and arachnids. No home is complete without one. Be the envy of your family and friends. Only fifty nine ninety nine plus postage and packaging. Buy now while stocks last. So Natalie bought a Foxo 3000 and waited impatiently for the postman to arrive. When he finally showed three weeks later, she was slapped with a customs charge. But Natalie didn't care. It was worth it. She hurriedly unpacked the Foxo 3000, plugged it in beside her alarm clock, placed it on her bedside table and turned it on. The ultrasound was ultrasonic, so she couldn't hear it. But she could hear a low hum as the machine came to life. The humming sound soon had the same effect as a light thunderstorm outside the window, or rain hitting the canvas of a tent, or of waves slapping at the shore. 
she found it relaxing, and she was soon unable to sleep without it. And best of all, the spiders disappeared too. That was until the night of the power cut. Natalie was half asleep in the darkness when she noticed it. The humming of the ultrasound machine faded into nothingness, and the sudden silence was more noticeable than a car backfiring outside the window. When she opened her eyes, there was nothing but darkness. Her heavy blinds cut off all light from outside, and even the muted red digits on her alarm clock had disappeared. Natalie reached for her phone, which she had left on the bedside table, and she instantly recoiled when she found it. There was movement, an unwelcome scuttling, and the tickling sensation of something brushing against her hand. She screamed, withdrew her hand, and thought about the situation for a second, and then reached for the phone again. This time she managed to pick it up and she hurriedly unlocked it and booted up the Torch app that she uses when she's the last person to leave the office and has to go around from room to room in the half-light, checking for ghosts and crackheads. At first, the beam of light shone in her eyes and blinded her, but she swung the phone round to scan the room and immediately wished she had hadn't. She saw spiders, thousands upon thousands of them, Spiders of all shapes and sizes, all swarming all over each other. They covered the walls, the carpet, the curtains, the ceiling. They covered the bedside table and the duvet. They fell down from the ceiling and landed in her hair. They swarmed beneath the sheets and covered her arms and legs. They were everywhere. Natalie opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. The last thing she saw was the last thing she ever wanted to see. Every day was different to the forensic pathologists, but that rainy Tuesday in February took the biscuit. It should have been routine. A woman in her early forties had been found dead in her apartment of a suspected heart attack, an open and shut case, quite literally. But when they made the first incision, they found no internal organs. Instead, the torso was filled with thousands of tiny spiders, living in her hollowed-out corpse like it was the cupboard beneath the stairs. They like the darkness. Okay, that was They Like the Darkness by myself, Dane Cobain, narrated by Susie Q. DeMarco. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound, and this is Build a Coffin by Robert Honor from his A Lounge Full of Dreams EP. Build a coffin for me And could you fill it with grief And can you load it so Shed a tear Create a river so clear That you can see to the bottom Flowing year after year Form a queue at the dark So wicked as friends and relatives talk. What a wonderful life, full of heartache and strife. Oh, that boy was so crazy. Truly, what a Am I deluded to expect so much appreciation? One's life's concluded from a ring of hope around the nation. Our creeds and cultures, they will 
join up for the greater good This won't happen, but I wish it would So build a coffin for me Bury me six feet deep So just for once I'll feel special Eternally sleep to build a coffin for me. Please build a coffin for me. Please build a coffin for me. Please build a coffin. Someone on your street, at your supermarket, or in your park is highly likely to have COVID-19. This is a national health emergency. Around one in three people have no symptoms and are spreading it without knowing. So it's critical we stay home. Don't meet anyone outside your household or support bubble except for exercise. Only go out if it's essential. Stop the spread. Stick to the rules. If you bend the rules, people will die. Stay home. Protect the NHS. Save lives. Love WhatsApp. Love Wickham Sound. Use WhatsApp to message us. Just send your message to 01494 449900. Go on, give it a try. Someone jogging, walking their dog, or working out in the park is highly likely to have COVID 19. This is a national health emergency. Around one in three people have no symptoms and are spreading it without knowing. So exercise locally. If you're on your own, you can meet one other person. But keep your distance. Exercise, don't socialize. And wash your hands the moment you get home. Stop the spread. Stick to the rules. If you bend the rules, people will die. Stay home. Protect the NHS. Save lives.
was Somewhere Only We Know by Dizzy Fish, and before that we had Build a Coffin by Robert Honor. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound, and I am about to be joined by this week's guest, who is Andy Leonard, the vocalist from Dizzy Fish, so over to Andy. So um, the first question that I ask everybody is, uh, what was the last book that you read, and what did you think of it? The last book I read, I've been a bit lazy on books over, over lockdown. The last book I read was actually Close Quarters, the uh, Neil Harmon book about Wickham Wanderers and their season last year. Um, that was the last paper book that I've, that I've actually read. Um, and it was a fantastic read, living the, the, the whole season. Um, yeah. Going to most of the games and, and, then, and then reading about the, the, the inside story of it was, yeah, it's a great, great read. I recommend it to anyone. Um, apart from um, apart from that, boring work type books. Yeah, um, yeah. the only other things that I've been reading. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably the last the last proper book that I read. I mean, I guess there are like all kinds of fascinating stories about the season as well. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, he went into it, you know, with an idea um, of of just spending a season with the the team with the lowest budget, who everyone had mm. written off. And that, you know, how was he going to know that that the season would end the way it did? Yeah. Um, and the fascinating insights into into some of the stories of the players um, that you you know, as a, as a fan, um, I've been watching Wickham since the, the end of the sixties, but you know, you you don't really know the ins and outs of it. But yeah, they gave him access to everything, and yeah, great great read. Awesome, cool. So um, obviously, the main thing I want to chat to you today is about is uh, Dizzy Fish. So for a start, could you introduce the band members and tell us what they each play? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, there's myself. Um, I sing. Um, I wouldn't dare try any of the other instruments. Uh, the guys would probably shoot me. Um, and uh, I've been I've been singing for ages. I've been with the guys. Uh, City Fish are ten years old um, mm -hmm. now. I haven't been with them for the whole ten years. Um, lose lose track as to as to how long I have actually. I think it's probably been six or seven now um a great fun uh we've got uh ian nichols who's on drums um he keeps us all in order organizes uh pretty much everything um he's a grown-up when it comes to that sort of thing so he's uh, he's good for that then um martin soul is a guitarist um and uh has an array of of uh, of pedals that he likes to use that every opportunity um and really sort of keeps us musically in in check and uh kim north who's the uh, male kim as we <laughs> discussed previously um who we also share with uh, with straight eight um on, on bass guitar um and the three of them have been around since the start and as i say i, I joined them a bit by accident um a number of years back it sounds like there's a story there so uh, how did you end up joining them um, well, I, I used to be the singer with uh, with Kim in, in Straight Eight um, and had been for, for nearly 12 years. Um, mm -hmm. And the original singer from Dizzy Fish um, had a, a, I think he was hospitalised with a lung problem or, or bronchitis or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I got a call, they got a gig that they really didn't want to turn down. And they said, look, you're probably aware of most of the songs we play can you do this gig we've got time to have a, a rehearsal or two with you mm. will you do it and i said yeah it sounds like a right laugh of course i will so um so i helped him out and did a couple of gigs until he um until he got better and thought that was the end of it um and then what was one reason or another um he departed and they were looking for a new mm. for a new singer um and i helped them out again for a couple of gigs while they were looking for somebody um, and that didn't work out. And in the end, I thought, you know what? I've enjoyed it so much. Mm. I've had such a good laugh doing it that I really, I really fancy doing it full time. And that's that's really how I kind of fell into it. Cool. And um, you mentioned that 2020 was the band's uh, 10 year anniversary. I guess you guys weren't able to uh, to really celebrate it. So what do you think you're going to no. do post pandemic to uh, to celebrate that? Um. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? We we last um, we're working it out today is the anniversary of our last pub gig. Yeah, um, I saw that on a, Facebook. A year ago yeah. today, yeah, um, fantastic pub in Berkhamsted that I've got to recommend to everybody called the Goat. There are 
um, Jules, the landlord, is a real champion of live music over there. And I really feel for him, um, you know, for the last year, not being able to do anything. Um, great pub. And we had a fantastic time. There were a great crowd. And, you know, we had no idea that that was going to be our last pub gig. And then the start of March, we, we played at um, Rebellion Brewery for one of their open evenings. And that was our last gig. That, that was it. Um, so, you know, for a year, we've, we've not been able to do anything. Um, so I guess we're, we're looking at the diary again um, today, you know, what with uh, Boris's plan to, mm-hmm. to come out of lockdown and just looking to see when we think realistically, um, you know, gigs are going to start back up again. Um, so I think, I think realistically, we're looking at the second half of the year. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, we had an inquiry this afternoon um, for, for precisely that, for, for, for a gig, at, you know, second half of the year. But I, I think we'd just be grateful. We'd, we'd play the opening of an envelope, as, as a, I guess yeah. most, bands will, <laughs> most bands will tell you at the moment. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll get some open air stuff done first when we're able to, uh, and then we'll be able to do things indoors. Um, yeah. The people I feel for, though, the, the, the people who have rearranged their weddings and so on, yeah several yeah. times over the last year you know we, we even now we've got we've got weddings and and special birthday parties and so on in the diary but you're looking at them thinking it's, it's not mm. going to happen they're going to have to rearrange it again they're the guys that feel sorry for you know we just like going out and playing but you yeah. know when you're having to cancel a wedding two or three times that's yeah that that's something else yeah. but yeah, yeah i think sure. we'll uh, we'll definitely have a beer and a good time once we're let loose again and um, you mentioned that you played at the uh, the Rebellion Brewery opening. Because I noticed in, I think in your, your band bio, you mentioned you're a fan of Rebellion Beer, you're a fan of Wickham Wanderers. So you're clearly like uh, sort of very steeped in the area. What are some of your favourite things about Wickham? Or are those your two favourite things? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my father got me watching Wickham Wanderers when I was just a tiny kid. Um, and I've, I've been, ever since, I've been a season ticket for years. Um, and it's, you know, it's been great to see their rise up to non-league to, uh, you know, to where they are now in the championship. Um, that's been great. Um, obviously, the Rebellion Brewery's come along um, and their beer is, is fantastic, you know, as everybody who tries it knows. Other things I love about Wickham, I mean, five minutes from the centre of town, you're in the middle of the Chilton countryside. You've got woodland, you've got open fields, you've got hills, you know, what's not to like. You can jump on a train once we're able and be in the middle of London in 40 minutes. So, you know, you've got the best of both worlds. It's, it's you know, we've turned into a bit of a commuter town from being a chair making town. Um, but we've got all that lovely scenery on our doorstep and we've got great access to, you know, to big cities and entertainment if you want it. Mm. What's not to like? Sure. I think too many yeah. people, too many people knock us for, you know, things like the Octagon and the old bus station and, um, you know things like that, but there were so many good things to uh, to enjoy around the town as well. Yeah, yeah, cool. And um, so you mentioned obviously you guys haven't been able to to play live um, for a while now, but you have been able to adapt uh, to do some of your lockdown videos. So I wondered if you could tell us yeah. a little bit about <laughs> how, how how did you make those and how did they come about? So uh, yeah, so uh, it must have been beginning of February. Um, last year we'd actually booked a, a church hall um just to get in and do some recording because we'd not recorded anything new for quite some time um and we just wanted to get some new songs down so we could give them to people who wanted to book us for parties weddings so we we actually had the um a lot of the stuff already recorded um and i saw a band do something on on youtube pretty soon after lockdown started and we were just talking and saying it was a great idea. It was a bit of fun. It wasn't too serious. Can we do it? And we had a bit of a look around. Martin's the whiz on on mixing all of the, the sounds together. Um, and I just found some free uh, software off, off the internet. Thought, let's give it a crack. Uh, got the guys to um, to record some daft, uh, you know, some daft videos miming along to the tracks we'd recorded and then managed to splice them together. And it just started the first one as, can we do it? Let's have a bit of fun. We can't rehearse. Let's see what happens. And I think, I think people just took to them. Um, they, they enjoyed it. People were saying, when's the next one? And yeah, in the end, yeah. we kind of felt 
we'd got to the point where we had to stop because we were just churning them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'd, we'd recorded some kind of pretty eclectic stuff. Um, I know you, you played on the show a while back. You played our version of the thing from the detectorist, the Johnny Flynn. Yeah. Number. Um, and that's like nothing we normally play. We, we got asked to learn that for a wedding um, right, in yeah, 2020 right. that got cancelled. So we'd, we'd, we'd rehearsed it, we'd learnt it, we were ready to play it for the wedding and we recorded it in the session that we did. And we thought, well, let's, let's do that one. We love the show. Um, so let's, let's just do a video to that wandering around in the countryside and, uh, <laughs> and, and enjoying it. So that was, uh, that was good fun. But yeah, I think they, they were fun for us to do um kept us busy and hopefully people just got a bit of a laugh out of them they, they weren't meant to be serious yeah. as you probably saw from um yeah. from from the videos you know kim especially in the first one where he decided to put a, a dress and a variety of silly hats on and things mm. like this you know it's it, it's just cheer everyone up and hopefully we did that um and we, we didn't we deliberately didn't do a video to the one that we we've just put out a week or so ago um, we just thought we'd do a collection of photos for that because I think mm. now we've, we've run out of ideas, to be honest, yeah. Um, yeah. on lockdown videos. So, um, yeah, let's wait and see what happens when we're, when we're back up and, and gigging again. How important for you as a band is it for you to cheer people up? It often seems like one of the main goals of your music, I think, is to just to cheer people up and make, make people have a good time, you know? Yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's really what the band's about. We love playing to people we love playing live um and it's a two-way thing with the band you know if you're having a good time um and and you know i'll say you know we mess about we have a laugh but you know we, we do it in a professional way you know the the, the quality mm -hmm. of what we're playing obviously comes first um but if we can do that with a smile on our face having fun then that you know comes across to the people who come to see us anyone who's been to see us will know you know that we don't take ourselves terribly seriously we like to have a bit of fun um and if the audience want to have a bit of fun as well great you know that's that's kind of the ethos of what we do um and yeah so to make the videos i think can you imagine us you know all doing really kind of serious cold play videos to uh, mm. <laughs> to, to it's just you, not us it, in some ways it would actually be humorous if you did it just because it would be such a clash with what you guys are about you know yeah, I think it was um was it Blink One Eight Two did a did a video where they parodied all the boy bands. You know, that, that was the kind of thing that we'd have to aim for, I think, if we tried to do it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> lots of uh yeah, lots of lots of eighties big fans blowing the hair back yeah, and sure. long trench coats and gazing into the distance, that kind of thing. You're listening to the Archer on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain and I'm here in conversation with Andy Leonard from Dizzy Fish. We're going to check out some more of their music now. So this is their cover of The Riverboat Song.
the Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and I'm here with Andy Leonard from Dizzy Fish. Over to Andy. 
And um, I guess men mentioning the 80s, uh, you, you guys play covers from pretty much from the 60s through to the 2020s, you know. Um, and I wonder, do you, do you personally have a, a particular decade that you prefer? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, it's, it actually changes as, as you get older. I think I've gone through a variety. You know, I love a bit of 70s stuff. Um, you know, the 80s was, was <laughs> you know, great fun for, for everyone. Um, the 90s, I do enjoy doing the music. I do love a bit of Britpop. Um, as mm. probably you notice from our sets, um, you know, Oasis, Blur, those, those kind of bands I'm drawn to. But then there's some great, you know, new stuff. The Sam Fender number that we covered recently, you know, his his album's fantastic. Uh, you know, so there's still some great, good guitar-driven music coming mm. through. Um, so, yeah, I think like most, most people in covers bands, you've got to have a broad... Um, kind of spectrum of stuff you listen to and not be too you know not not have too much tunnel vision on on homing into a particular type of an era or you you, mm. you tend to limit the the people who are looking to book you um yeah. people don't yeah. want to hear you um in a pub just playing one particular type of music they want something that everybody can can enjoy and again it comes down to the, the having fun aspect you know that's what that's what we like to do try to try to yeah. get something for everybody not necessarily um, the most popular cover, um, but if we can do a, you know, let's say a band's second most famous cover and get people going, ah, oh, I remember this one. I haven't heard this for ages. What a great song. Mm. You know, so we don't necessarily play all the same songs as everyone else. Um, but yeah, but you should pretty much know everything that we do. Yeah. I was going to ask actually what makes for a good uh, a good song choice for you guys to cover, but I think you you pretty much answered that one there. We um we actually have a, a <laughs> we have a method of picking songs. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, we tend to sit down once a year, um, have a beer, and then go for a curry. Um, and and beforehand, we all email into Ian a list of all the songs we fancy doing. And then on the night, we, we kind of sit there and thrash it out until we come up with a, a yeah. definitive sort of top 20. And then we and then we go away and score them. And whatever comes out with the highest score um, are the ones that we'll then start to pick up and do next. Um, and we'll rehearse and see if they work. And if they do, we'll, we'll stick them in a set and see how they go down. Cool. Cool. And um, so you mentioned Martin earlier, Martin being your, uh, I suppose, your, your tech guy and uh, helping with the videos and whatnot and i know yeah. uh, martin was, martin's who you've been recording some of the acoustic tracks over lockdown with as well uh what was that like for the two of you to just just work together just as the two of you and um, which were your favorite tunes to work on um it was it was really interesting it's hard because it's it's a different um you do, you're trying to do a different type of thing to what you what you're used to um mm -hmm. it, it's been enjoyable i you know i just love i just love music um and you know with lockdown there's limited opportunities to sing at the top of your voice um yeah. you know with the family in the house you get <laughs> get told off a lot um and i guess you know with with um with the other guys you know trying to record drums at home and um if you haven't got anything to to record your bass guitar with or you know it's difficult let's be honest yeah. it is difficult for everybody to record stuff at home um myself and martin are lucky in that we've we've got what we needed to do it and we just thought well you know while we're while we're not able to meet up as a band let's at least just do something creative and mm. you know try to keep try to keep sane and that's that's really where it came from um it, it's been good fun um we, we've got a couple of um songs that we're that we're looking at doing now um he sent me over a couple of guitar tracks for me to have a look at um again uh yeah some interesting stuff um but it's been it's been good fun um obviously i've liked like doing the the oasis covers that we that we did um and, and also yeah the the um wake me up when september ends is a is a great is a great song that i, that I enjoyed doing too uh and then the ocean color scene um out the acoustic version outside the circle um it's a song that i've loved for years it's on an obscure mm. ocean color scene album um that, that i've loved for a long time um but it, it's a song that you'd never you'd never do with a full band it, it's not a band yeah. kind of number 
Um, and that's that's been good, I think, the chance to do something that we just normally we wouldn't play. Um, yeah. And just put something down. You know, it was it was never necessarily meant as something for mass consumption. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's good fun. We've enjoyed it. And hopefully, as I said, you know, with the other stuff, if it gives other people some enjoyment, oh, great. Yeah, cool. And uh, just one last question to end on, which is uh, what have you guys got planned next? And where can people follow you to keep up with you? Uh, we're all over the socials, obviously. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you can find us on Facebook. Um, you can find us on Instagram, you can find us on Twitter. Facebook's probably an Instagram, it's where we update <clears throat> most of the stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Dizzy Fish UK. Um, we're on Lemon Rock as well for those people that that, that um, want to have a look at other bands and venues and so on. And we've got our own um, website, um, dizzyfish.rocks, um, that you can find us on too. So, you know, we're, we're everywhere. Um, what have we got planned next? Uh, some more recordings, I guess, while we're while we're not able yeah. to meet up and book a studio at the moment. Um, we're going to try to do some more stuff from home uh, and put it out. Um, that will hopefully give us a bit of a jump on on being able to remember any of our songs when we can finally <laughs> get out and gig. But yeah. you know, we've got we've got gigs in the diary. It's just now it's a case of you know, will they or won't they go ahead? That's it's a waiting game, really, I think. But I think yeah. second half of the year, um, yeah, coming to a safe venue near you, I think is the uh, awesome. uh, that's the, the thing I'd say there. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows? Yeah, more acoustic stuff, more band stuff, and, and then hopefully gigs from the summer onwards. Thank you very much to Andy Leonard for joining me. You're listening to the Archer on 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound, and let's have another uh, tune from Dizzy Fish from Andy's band. So this is Stuck in the Middle with You, What a Banger.
You could be driving in your car. You could be walking your dog. You might just be working. But whatever you're doing, you're also listening to Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. And if you're in business, your potential new customers could be listening too. So talk to them and let them know what you have to offer. Radio is a cost-effective and proven way to get your message across. And Wickham Sound 106.6 FM could put together an affordable package that could work for you. So call 01494 449900 or email contact at wickhamsound.org.uk. Deadlines to meet, targets to reach, clients to see. You're busy, and the last thing you need is to be thinking about your business IT. Take the headache out of it with CST. We offer the best possible technical support service and can tailor make solutions for your infrastructure, whatever your requirements. Outsourcing your IT is cost effective. And with CST, you'll have total support. For more information, visit cstlimited.com. CST. As IT should be. In the future, you'll be able to watch TV on your microwave. 3D print yourself a personal butler. You rang mom. And get fit by just looking at a treadmill. OK, maybe not that. But wherever the technology does go, radio will go there too. Because Radio Player is working with the world's leading car and tech companies to keep radio out in front. Radio Player. In the car, in the home, in the future. Find out more at radioplayer.org.
that was You Shaped Hole by Jordana Blake, and before that we had Stuck in the Middle with You by Dizzy Fish. My name's Dan Cobain, you're listening to the Archer on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound, and we're going to head over now to Twangling Jack Ford over in the Oak Shed for this week's album review. I'm Full of the Rules by Rufus Wainwright. Back in the noughties, I got into Rufus Wainwright when I heard the two albums Want One and Want Two, and they represented a broad range of song styles, everything from show tunes and folk music right through to pretty much standard rock music. He had one song where he used Ravel's Bolero um, and it, I, I, they were at the time my favourite albums, I couldn't stop listening to them. He then went off in all kinds of other directions because that's what he's like, he wrote an opera, he did an album which was basically solo piano music uh, based on Shakespearean sonnets. He's done all kinds of things. Uh, he made a deliberate attempt to go commercial, which was probably one of his least successful things. And he finally has come up with another album which is in the same vein as the two great ones that he did previously. So, Unfollow the Rules by Rufus Wainwright. Just some superb playing, singing and songwriting. Thank you very much to Twangling Jack Ford for this week's album review. Thank you to Andy from Dizzy Fish for joining us. You're listening to the Arch on 106.6 FM of Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Danny Cobain. As always, you can find us on Facebook if you search for the Arch Show Wickham Sound. You can also catch up on iTunes, Spotify, other uh, podcast players. And you can email me here on the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. And I particularly want to hear from local creatives, performers, authors, anyone who has news to share, MP3s to share, or who might be uh, interested in being a guest on the show so please do go ahead and reach out to me so we've reached pretty much the end of this week's show a big thanks again to everyone involved everyone who sent their music as well and uh, we're going to leave you with one last tune which is uh, you stand by me by humans can't reboot see you next week
This is Wickham 